Good afternoon, everybody. This is Gideon from Mana Entertainment. It's Tuesday, November 6, 2018. I'm recording this video for Thursday. Um, should be up at 9 in the morning on Thursday. Hopefully, uh, when you're watching this, it should be Thursday. I'm making this video today to end the series. I had some more plans for the How to Make a Game Studio um, series. One of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to do a video with Carlos uh, Franco our artist for Mana Entertainment, one with our um, composer, with Mike Bacon Jr., you know, one with our programmer, Eric Mazer, or, or DJ, one of those guys. And um, it's not completely off the table. It's something we might do later if we get requests from you, from um, whoever's watching. I'm not sure who's watching this, but in the future, if something changes and I read the comments, I see that you guys are like, hey, you know, we'd like to know more about it or whatever, like, we'll, we'll keep on. We'll talk about the process in more depth and more um, detail. But in the meantime, before we get started with this next video, uh, with this video, I just want to let you guys know that I've been under an uh, enormous amount of pressure and I've been very stressed out lately. So I'm going to take it a little bit more chill, a little more casual with, uh, um, with the YouTube videos for Man Entertainment. Uh, I'm not solely going to talk about business and, you know, gaming business things. Um, you know, I will talk about the game industry. I will talk about, you know, things that I like, what's going on in our life, in my life, and, um, you know, in the lives of people on my team. If there's something important I want to talk about, I'll talk about it here. Uh, talk about what we're doing with the shop and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't have as much time to dedicate to the YouTube channel yet because I can't afford to because our channel doesn't have enough likes. We don't have enough watch hours to start making uh, start making it monetized or whatever. And that's fine. You know, I've heard from a lot of people that it takes a while. It takes a lot of videos and a lot of time for people to start catching on um, to the channel. Hope that this channel grows. And when it does, we're definitely going to want to start giving out uh, rewards and stuff like that, prizes um, to our subscription base and to people who actually subscribe and like our videos. Uh, we have a shop, of course, Man Entertainment Shop, so I'll be selecting some items from there from time to time. And I'll also be selecting uh, other things at different times, like gift cards or maybe like a game or something. But that's going to be dependent on growth. So, aside from that, uh, you know, let's get started. Right, so the last video is what's next, right? This is what we're gonna talk about when it comes to the video game industry. What's next is now is when the real work begins. So you made your game, you developed it, you got it on a schedule. Um, hopefully if you were blessed or lucky enough to have uh, uh, somebody who believed in you, in, uh, whether it's investors or whether it's crowdfunding or you know maybe even like a rich uncle or something or a rich dad, who knows. If you had somebody that believed in you enough to invest the kind of money that we showed in the previous video in the series, which was anywhere from four hundred thousand to seven to almost eight hundred thousand dollars, to for an eight-month development plan for a mobile game. That's just a mobile game, right? That's not even like a, a triple-A game. That's not even a double-A game. Typically, for games like that, I would give it a two-year minimum for planning. But uh, and that's just. Uh, the eight months, by the way, that's with two months for buffer. I really think that our game, if done by professionals, if done by people that had a lot of experience and that were, you know, experts at mobile games and they knew exactly what they were doing, I think they could do it in less than six months. But, you know, I always like to plan at least a little bit longer. That's another, that's a principle I actually learned from my professor, um, Rupert Megnot, who he, um, I'll actually show you guys a picture of, of what they're doing. Their, their group is called Burnout Game Ventures. And they're pretty cool because I think it's very important that, you know, it, that I mentioned that if you're starting an indie game studio or you have an indie game and you want some help with the business side, this guy basically taught me everything I know about um, traditional project management. And uh, aside from that, he's a, he's a really cool guy. He's very open-minded. Um, you know, he's going to push you. If you join him, he's, he's not going to let you slack. He's going to make sure that, you know, you treat it like a business because it is a business. And at the end of the day, we make games and we love games, but you know, it's a business. We're in it to win it, right? We're not in it to waste time and, and to lose money and stuff like that. So anyway, um, what comes next, right? What comes next is you have the game out. Now, the most important thing in the world is marketing. And whether you want to think of that as marketing or whether you want to think of that as getting friends to play it, however you want to word it, however you want to think about it, the, it boils down to marketing. 
the idea is you want to get it in as many hands as possible i'm in this phase right now we have not marketed the game yet we are going to start once the money starts coming in a little bit more money's been a little bit tight now but um i'm hoping that this youtube video will pick up enough steam that we can use this as one of our avenues for marketing right that's one of the reasons i made our youtube channel uh, i mean I, I made the youtube channel before but you know it's one of the reasons i'm doing these videos in the first place um you know uh word of mouth marketing stuff like that is really cool uh it helps especially if you know you have a cool game that's easy to understand people like it has a good design or a good story or something unique and, and really catchy about it right but um yeah what can i say the the next steps are basically you can have the best game in the world like your game can be by far the most wonderful game that you've ever seen in the world but if nobody knows about it, it will go down in obscurity. You know, so many games I could think about just off the top of my head where this where this kind of thing happened. You know, the original Beyond Good and Evil was a cult classic. It was a fantastic game, way ahead of its time, very well designed, very well built, awesome game. Sales were not great; they were mediocre. I mean, that's why it's taken what almost ten, maybe even twelve years for Ubisoft to even consider doing a sequel. And you know, that was a great game. And now the sequel obviously looks like it's there's a lot of love going into it you know because i guess over time the fans built up which is proof of concept of what i spoke about in the last video that in the video game industry things might not happen for you right away but the reason that we always say you know don't give up and keep on fighting and always move forward and keep on going 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 and never stop is because once your game is out if um you know there, there might be the right you you might be advertising it to the wrong audience or you might not be advertising it at all or maybe the right people who will love that game, who truly will appreciate your game, haven't heard of it yet. You want them to get it in their hands. So if you keep it around, you have it available, you know, maybe through word of mouth or maybe through sheer luck one day if you can't afford the money. But I highly recommend at this point, any side money you get that's not going to your bills, to your house, you know, in our case, to our children or, you know, making sure that they have food and a roof over their head and stuff like that. Once all of that is said and done, any extra money we have is going to be focused into marketing right now because we want to get our hand, our game in the hands of as many people as possible, especially since it's an open beta right now as of November 6, 2018. It's um it's basically something that we want feedback for because we have this we have most of the game is working. Uh, there are some features that are still not implemented. For example, when you play the game, if you didn't know this, on the bottom there's uh you know, I'll show you a screenshot of this. There's some, um, you know, boxes with icons on it, and those icons are supposed to be companion bots. Originally, we were going to have, like, the actual bots float around on the screen, but it didn't look too good. It, it kind of looked confusing. You couldn't tell what was going on half the time. But um, essentially what they are is they're, if you think of, like, mobile RPGs or, like, you know, pocket RPGs and stuff like that, you know how you have your equipment for your character? Well, this is essentially equipment for your ship, and these things are going to have effects where... They either give you permanent um, boosters in game, like permanent stat increases or, or you know benefits, or they will do um, or they will give you a special effect in game when you're playing, or a combination of the two. So, for example, our healing companion bot, when you use it in game, you will see that your HP actually rises. So um, that system is is very. I love it. I think it's one of the coolest things ever, and um, I just need somebody to build it. So we still have Eric Mazer, he's still on board and he's still working with us in a limited form. So I'm trying to get some money so hopefully we can get him paid to, uh, you know, so that he doesn't have to work with somebody else and he can keep on working for us because he's an awesome programmer. I, I don't say this lightly, I love everybody on our Mana Entertainment team. They're all a pleasure to work with. Yeah, so I wouldn't trade anybody on my team at all, you know, like everybody who's who stayed who stayed with us or, you know, who has done what they said they were going to do, those guys, I will vouch for them. You know, if they ever need a, a recommendation to work in a studio, um, I, they can do it. They'll pass with flying colors. They're they're an awesome team. I've been really highly blessed that we have such a special and awesome team. And, um, you know, if you guys haven't seen them before, check out the About Us video. I kind of introduced everybody there. Um, I put a card to it at the end of the video, um, not a card, uh, you know, basically the video link, I'll put it at the end of the video so you guys can see it. But yeah, so, um, you know, and then once you have your game marketed, let's say hypothetical situation, you marketed, you got like 100,000 to 500,000 people actively playing your game. Uh, in our case, it's a mobile game. So the more people that play, it's the better, you know, it's obviously free to play. 
We do have in-app purchases that are planned for the game. Um, and the way that I design games, the way that I, I my philosophy is, is that mobile games, they, they make so much money and that's wonderful for us as a company if we get to that point. But it's also important that we are consumer forward thinking, you know, like we want to we want to think about our consumers first because I myself am a gamer. And like I mentioned in, on my LinkedIn post, I just, just did recently, I, I love this game called Fantasy War Tactics. It was by Nexon, right? It's a strategy RPG similar to FF Ta Final Fantasy Tactics, if you don't know the game. Uh, it was fun. It was amazing. I loved it. I still play it occasionally, but it kind of died and they let their subsidiary have it. And um, that company is, uh, it's not that they're bad, but they basically have to work to reverse engineer the code. So they are taking so long to do any updates lately. And the game used to be updated regularly, like maybe every one to two weeks. We would get new events, new bonuses, all sorts of cool things, new characters like once a month. It was really fun. I really love that game. And I never once felt like I absolutely had to purchase something in that game to be competitive. My team right now in that game my name in there is Kurisu Samano. I use that for a lot of mobile games. Um, it's a whole thing from Naruto, but that's another thing I'll get into another day. Yeah, so I use that, that, that moniker, and my team actually is strong enough to be players that you can tell that they played, they either paid to win or they cheated the system somehow because, you know, that's the reality. In mobile games, you still have people that can cheat, um, that they figure out how to break into the network side. And it sucks, but you know, other people, they cheat because they're cheating in life. They're super duper rich and they can afford to pay for the most expensive things without it breaking the bank. So, and that's not, that's not, you know, that's a generalization. That's just, um, that's who we would want playing our game, ideally. Somebody who's gonna be super duper rich and can afford to just buy whatever they want all the time and no problem. But um, I love that game. I love the philosophy behind having things that are, that are accessible and when you pay for it, you know, you might have an easier chance of getting it or you might have a, a better, um, might have better options than if you don't pay for it, but you don't need it, right? Another game that I'm currently playing is Marvel Strike Force. It's another mobile game and um, I like that game. It's, it's really cool. It, I think the system is well built, but I think that it's intentionally cheesy, right? Like I think they made it cheap and purpose to make you want to spend more money. And I hate that all their in-app purchases are so expensive. Like the cheapest one that you can get on average is $14.99. Occasionally they'll have a $9.99 package. Very rarely do they have a $4.99 package. And then they have 99 cent packages. But anything that's less than 15 bucks in that game is usually a waste of money, a waste of time. And I think they know this. And one of the things they do to keep you hooked on the game, right? One of the, the tactics that they use, which I really can't stand, is um, they make the same players. So let's say, for example, on my team right now, I have a uh, Deadpool. I have um, I have an X team, right? I love my X Men team the most. I have like three or four teams, but this is my favorite team. I use Thanos as my tank. He's about 23k. I use Deadpool as uh, one of my damage dealers, and uh, he's about 16k. Wolverine, I have him at like 18 or 19k. Uh, Storm, I have her at about 17k, and then I use Scarlet Witch. And the reason I love that team is because Wolverine and Deadpool, they just, they pack the damage on, and then the cool thing about Storm is, um, she gets charges every time she uses a move. And the more charges you have, the higher chance you have of either doing tons of damage with her third move, which is a lightning attack, or her second move, which is an Ice Storm kind of thing, right? And, um, her Ice Storm has a chance to stun and slow a character. So you do that and it lasts a full turn, which in that game, a turn can last a pretty long time, you know, because everybody gets a turn before their next turn is up. But then with Scarlet Witch, she has her third level ability where she extends all the debuffs on characters for one round. So I can have them stun and slow for two rounds. I bring the pain. It's, it's awesome. But uh, <laughs> let me not digress. Um, you know, in mobile games, basically, that's fun and everything and it's cool. But it's cheap and I think that's one of the reasons why mobile games aren't received very well which is why I actually want to show you guys some footage of this mobile game bombshell that was just dropped people were already mad at EA for um, taking command and conquer and turning it into a mobile game obviously I like mobile games I'm making mobile games right I'm playing I have my PS4 right there I have my switch I still play my Wii U because I have Smash Brothers on the Wii U and uh, those are my three consoles pretty much that I have. And I play on PC. I play on PC because I have a monster PC build, in my opinion, for gaming. 
So, uh, I play on PC and stuff like that, but anyway, going back to mobile games, they just announced Diablo Immortal, and this is how it went. I was curious, I see a lot of mechanics that we've kind of been begging for in Diablo 3 in this. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any, uh, yeah, this, this, the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do, do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right? You can play on your tablet too. Yeah, so that wasn't the best option in my opinion to actually like, you know, yeah, you want to show your mobile game, you want to be excited about it, clearly you want fans to like it, but I think that they could have handled it a little bit better. They could have um, said, oh, uh, you know, Diablo 4 coming in, uh, expected to be coming in quarter of whatever, you know, 2000, uh, 2019, 2020, whatever the case may be for PC, consoles and all that kind of stuff. And then said, oh, but in the meantime, for you Diablo fans, you know, we want to acknowledge that so many people have, you know, Android and iOS devices, and we, you know, we want to give you a chance to enjoy Diablo, and bam, here we go, Diablo Immortal. I think if they would have set it up like that, they wouldn't have gotten as much um, resistance, and that goes back to what I was talking about, like, with games like Marvel Strike Force. The problem is you have games that are interesting and fun, and... Don't lie, you like mobile games, right? Every gamer is like, oh, but I don't like mobile games, that's not a real game. Yeah, then why do they make billions of dollars a year, more than the console games make? It's because, guess what, us console gamers are playing mobile games too. So yeah, you can lie to us and you can lie to the world and say, I don't like mobile games, but mobile games, everybody plays them. You all have a phone, um, you know, it might be a time waster, it might be a little bit of fun when you're on your breaks at work, when you're at your breaks in school. Whatever the case may be, we play mobile games, right? But I think why we have a negative perception of mobile games is because, truth be told, you know, it's 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 a lot of times they, they try to rob your money. They try to get you addicted and hooked, and um, it's it sucks that that's the perception that it has, but it doesn't have to be that way. So that's the basically where I want to end this video. So we went from marketing to getting games in people's hands, but when you're a giant like Blizzard and you have a game like Diablo Immortal, there's not much marketing you need to do. Just on your name alone, people are going to download your game and play it. They will spend money on marketing because obviously the more you market, the more money you'll, you'll make. But the thing that um, I, I basically want to communicate and the thing that I'm trying to get as, as an, uh, an aside is once your game is out in the public, people are going to have opinions about it, right? The more people know about it, the stronger the opinions will be, either positive or negative. How you deal with it is very important. So it's important to have good timing and it's also important to have good delivery. So sometimes timing is, doesn't work on your side. You know, we already know for indies, it's not always like you don't have the money to, to have things go according to plan, right? And even if you have the money, it doesn't necessarily mean things will go on time. As we know, so many companies are always delaying games or, you know, like canceling projects all the time. Uh, there's probably more cancelled games than you've ever heard of, you know, more than uh, than exists right now. But anyway, yeah, so this is going to be the end for now of the How to Make a Game Studio series. If you guys liked it, let us know. If you didn't like it, um, you know, let us know too. Uh, like or don't like the, the video, I mean dislike, but engage with us please. We, we need that. It helps us a lot. Um, it helps us know what we're doing, if we're doing something right or wrong. And we need you guys, you know, that's why we're making this YouTube video. We're hoping that we can engage with an audience, develop, develop our own audience, and that you guys can help us make games that you're going to enjoy. We're doing mobile games now, and we're not limited to mobile games. We want to do console games, we want to do PC games, you know, um, we want to get our hands in, in, in a lot of pieces of the pie, but we can't do that with our limited resources. So the more help we get from you guys for free, it's free to like and subscribe, it's free to watch our videos, you know. The, the easier it's going to be for us and our team to grow. So thank you so much for watching. Gideon from Man Entertainment. You guys have a great day.